There is something to be said for a show that knows what it wants to be. It seems lately there are a lot of shows with all these interesting ideas they want to explore, but too many ideas for any of them to be done well. Not Black Lagoon, though. Its goal is to be a cool action show, and everything else flows from there, and because of this, it's one of the best shows I've seen in a while. Since Black Lagoon is somewhat old, and maybe not as well known by my viewers, let's go over the basic plot. The story starts off with Rokuro, a Japanese businessman getting kidnapped by the Lagoon Company, with Lagoon being a transport company within the crime world of Southeast Asia. Through some circumstances involving a healthy dose of explosions, Rokuro ends up joining the Lagoon and taking the name of Rock. At this point, the story is broken up into 3-5 to five episodes arcs, with each arc having the Lagoon Company fight some type of foe, from Nazis to killer mates to the Japanese Mafia. Each arc is mostly self-contained, with whatever plot elements that were introduced in one arc mostly resolved by the end of it. This does mean that there isn't much of an overarching story, which is typically something I dislike, but pretty much all the arcs had a thrilling enough story that they worked without needing a grand story to encompass everything. But where the show really shines, and what's able to make the show work so well, is its characters. There are two main things I like about the characters here. First is the development that Rock and many of the side characters get. Rock is someone who at the start is a very moral person. He wants to help people not kill them, morals that go completely against the world he's a part of now. So it is interesting seeing how he copes with this, especially in contrast to Revy, who doesn't give life any value and sees herself and the people in the city as already dead. While there may not be an overarching story, Rock's character arc does weave through all the arcs, especially with the second season and the OVAs. The arc-specific characters also tend to be quite well explored and developed, especially when they're thrown from a normal life into one where it's kill or be killed. Some of the parallels they draw between Rock and Revy in those arc-specific characters are really fascinating. I also love the strong personalities of the side cast. Each one is great to see on screen, and it's hard to pick a favorite, because this show has a sword crazy Chinese chick, a chainsaw crazy chick, a gun crazy maid, a gun crazy nun, killer incestuous vampire twins, a gun crazy Russian, a Scottish getaway driver who likes drugs too much, a gun crazy nun, and lastly, a gun crazy maid. I will admit that these characters are sometimes one note, but in this case it doesn't matter because their interactions with each other and the main cast were absolutely wonderful. I always get excited when I find out they're going to have a role to play in a new arc. Sure, they may not always be that well explored, but they didn't need to be. They just need to be on screen, say some witty dialogue, kill some people, and I'm happy. The point where I was a bit disappointed in them was lack of development for Benny and Dutch, who were introduced early on and seemed to be the main characters, but despite the fact that they were around for pretty much every arc, it felt like they were never really explored, and in many cases, the arc-specific characters were better developed. Getting back to the story itself, the, the show is very much based around its actions to drive the plot, and the show executes this very well. It may not be guns firing every second, but there is an overall tension throughout the show which makes it exciting to watch because you know that something is going to blow up soon. This is especially done well with the OVA arc because it had already been established that Roberta was incredibly powerful and that the story was going to lead to a clash with her. Because if you are new that this clash was coming, the show could take its time with building everything else up with the tension knowing that the battle was coming, able to keep the story going strong. The action does tend to be on the absurd side of things, with the ridiculousness of some of the battles being one of the show's greatest strengths while also being one of its weaknesses. It is immensely entertaining to see Revy run through a ship, shooting everyone with perfect aim while dodging the incoming hail of bullets. But if you stop to think, this really isn't believable, and there are times where it seems like the accuracy of people's weapons correspond more toward the plot demands than what would make the most sense. Now, I like absurdity, and I think the show benefits from the extreme action more than the unbelievability hurts the show, but there are still some times where I felt like this is taken too far. Another thing I like about the show is how there aren't really good guys. Sure, there may be some pure villains and those that try to hold some sort of morals, but oftentimes the show is more about the people trying to survive in a world where life is meaningless. Even the characters who do evil things aren't just heartless, and the show's way of exploring this gray morality is what makes it have more substance than just a flashy show filled with gunfire. Now, I did have a few problems with the show. Early on, the enemies didn't really feel like they posed much of a threat, so there wasn't much tension here. This is fixed later on with the antagonists they introduced that pose a big challenge to Lucian, so it's exciting to see how these situations play out. There were also some parts which felt like they were wrapped up too early, though this is partly because there are a couple characters that I just wish I saw more of. It also felt like the main cast did have a lot of plot armor, since despite the danger they go through, they really are rarely hurt, and when they are, they just get better soon. I do have to warn you though, this show is dark. Possibly the darkest anime I've watched, and if not, pretty close. They really went all out in making this a dark and gritty show, and I was actually kind of surprised with how well this worked. Typically, shows that work based off fun and entertainment are limited with how dark they can go without the show just seeming edgy, which really seemed to be the case here. So this is another impressive part of the show. When it comes to the animation sound, I really don't have that much to say. 
Throughout the show, I was caught up in the events that were happening, not how they were presented, which means the animation did a good enough job for the events to pull me in, so that's what matters. Though I really can't think of any moments when I noticed the animation really shining. The music is the same. There's one track I did get to recognize, but a week after the finishing the show, I can't tell you what it sounds like. The dub, though, now this is something great. If you've been around my channel for long, you'll have picked up on the fact that I generally prefer dubs to subs. This is because I'm able to more easily get drawn into the show when the dialogue is in my own language instead of having to read all the subtitles, but I can see why people generally prefer Japanese. This show's case, though, the dub adds so much to the show that I feel you'd be missing out if you don't watch it in English. First of all, the dialogue between the characters just flows so well, especially with Revy's bantering with the other characters. All the profanity really adds to the dark and gritty nature of the show too, or maybe that's just the immature side of me that likes hearing people scream profanity. More than that though were the accents of the characters which really added to the international feel of the show. Plus the vast majority of characters aren't from Japan, and English is somewhat the standard business language, so it makes sense for the characters to be speaking English instead of Japanese. Now I could complain that Rock should have a Japanese accent since he's from Japan and would have one even if he is fluent in English, but that's probably nitpicking too much, so yes. This show goes right up there with Ghost Stories as a show that is far better dubbed than subbed. Overall, I really do like the show, more than I expected to actually. I came into it expecting a fun action show, and while it took a little while for me to get what I was after, once the show hooked me, it kept getting better from there. It's not just a show that has all style and no substance either, which I like because the show's action can only hold my attention for so long. There are some problems with the show, but none of them that major, especially for the type of show this is. So, I give Black Lagoon a score of an 8.25 and a rating of worth watching. Like many of the shows that I love, it may not be for everyone, but it really is one that I love. I would hesitate though to recommend this to younger viewers, but if you're a younger viewer and I say this, this is probably going to make you want to watch it even more, so whatever. Recommending similar shows is a challenge here because Black Lagoon really nails the cool action show in a way that I don't think other shows have ever surpassed. I believe Bebop does have a similar feel at times, but it is much more restrained and honestly not one I like all that much. But if you're in the mood for older shows that you should probably watch at some point, go with that one. Another recommendation would be Panty and Stalking with Carter Belt because it has lots of profanity, a chick with guns, and is just a whole lot of fun. Well, for some people anyway. I know these really aren't the best recommendations, so if you know of any others, please leave them in the comments because I'd actually like to see them myself, so I will add them to my ever-growing plan to watch list. Anyway, that wraps up my review. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will talk to you all next time.